Life depends on trees, particularly in Africa. 71% of Africa's total energy use is fulfilled by trees, with electricity only contributing 6%. In rural areas, people depend on trees for 90% of their energy. With 90% of energy use in rural Africa being firewood, then of course people's first priority is to have enough wood to live and to cook. Without firewood you die, just maybe take you longer, but you'll die if you have no, no fuel. So the first priority of the communities is to grow um, those trees. After that, the next priority very often from the farmers is, is fruit trees, which helps improve diets, of course, but also gives them an opportunity to, to earn money. Building materials is another aspect to build a home. If you haven't got the cash, if you can, if you can provide the wood yourself to, to, build the, um, uh, to build the house, you can make clay bricks because there's more water in the in the valley from the sand dam, then people are able to, to move forward and have good shelter. Lack of trees is one of the gravest threats to ecological stability and food production in Africa. Uh, we used to collect firewood far away, but these days there is no firewood to collect. What we do is we cut some branches of the trees, but not to cut the wood tree. We are not allowed to cut the big tree, but only the branches. It's a good thing because we are not damaging the environment. Trees can achieve so much in changing people's lives and transforming environments. The microclimate here has changed a great deal. And it has changed because of the following reasons. First of all, trees have been planted. And uh, normally this area would have acacia and grass. But the community here over the last 25 years have planted lots of trees. What this has meant is that there's more precipitation because uh, uh, of the, the arresting the, cl the clouds. There's more, much more dew now here. And also the birds and uh, the, the insects and the wind are bringing more seed here. So what is happening here is that uh, over the last 25 years, this climatic zone has shifted from fairly semi-arid zone 5 geographically to zone 3. Trees absorb carbon dioxide, fertilize soil, prevent erosion and help to absorb rainwater, whilst at the same time providing fuel, food, fodder, compost, building materials and even medicines from their wood, leaves and fruit. There are some of the trees that we plant or to be planted in the chamber and those, those trees can help us to maintain the moisture in the soil because as the tree grows the roots are growing and these, these roots of uh, most of the trees, their roots help to lighten the, the, the soil. So when the water comes, because that area is not dry, it sinks in the chamber very easily. So in that case it helps. A fantastic example of a multi-purpose tree is Moringa. Weight for weight, Moringa leaves contain more vitamin A than carrots, more calcium than milk, more iron than spinach, more vitamin C than oranges, and more potassium than bananas, whilst the protein quality of Moringa leaves rivals that of milk and eggs. Once you've increased the, the water capacity in a community, that enables um, more water to be used by, for vegetable nurseries, but also we encourage uh, communities to set up tree nurseries. Planting trees has been a big problem for many many years because of the difficulty of, of water but by the community coming together and creating their own tree nursery the communities run the tree nursery. Our field officers provide a little bit of expertise, they provide seedling bags and some seeds but the community then um, create and run their own tree nursery. The rules in which they operate is that they, um, they can have as many seedlings as they, as they like. When the rains come, they plant. But they have to have dug a two-foot cube hole, they have to have gone and collected manure, and then they can plant the tree. And that's why our survival rate of trees is between 65 and 90%. Whereas overall in Kenya, the survival rate is 2%. Only 2% of trees in Kenya survive. Communities plant over 85 different species of trees, half of which are indigenous, the rest being long-term localised exotics.
Excellent encourages them to grow trees first and foremost. The choice of what they plant is up to them. All the communities know the value of and need for trees. It's their work to create sand dams that enables them to make this need become a reality and benefit from their existence in the short and the long term.